Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of A A BJJ BJJ Marriage, Marriage. where we talk about our lives as a married jujitsu couple. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back to another episode of A BJJ Marriage with your hosts, Nick and Brittany Lee. Hello. Episode 81. So, feels a little empty down here, doesn't it? With us too? Yeah. Yeah, how lonely. Jeez. We haven't done an episode, just the two of us, in a while. We've been busy. It's been a busy start to the year. Yes. I think the last episode was two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Right? And since then, we've been to two seminars. Yeah, and we're doing a bunch of them this weekend, too. These are individual twos, not four. Not this weekend. Wait, what? The camp. The camp is next weekend. Yes. This weekend is a tournament in Milwaukee that mm-hmm. we're going to be going to coach mm-hmm. and... See what else happens there. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. What? Maybe I'll sign up. Who knows? Way to hold that one back. All right. (laughs) So, yeah, there is a tournament this weekend in Milwaukee held by Fuji. Mm -hmm. I'm coaching a couple kids and a couple of my white belt friends. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the first one in Milwaukee in a while. Normally we have to travel to the Dells or Chicago to do a tournament. So kind of exciting that it's right in our hometown. And then that night, we're doing couples night, which I'm really excited about. And it sounds like a lot of other people are too, so that's cool. I spent all morning, like, making a list of everything that I need to still do before Couples night? What do you know about being in a couple? (laughs) So basically, like, I don't know, six weeks ago or so, I had this idea come up in my mind. I'm a sucker for reality TV, so I just watch a bunch of, like, those love shows, like, Right now I'm watching Love Island and they do a bunch of like random games as couples trying to figure out who's like the biggest, best, strongest couple in the villa. And it made me think like that would be really fun to play with our friends. And so in my head, I just like kind of wrote down, jotted down an idea. Whenever I have a fun idea, I write it down. And I was like, I wonder if I can get a bunch of our friends who are in a relationship, whether they were dating or married to do just like a fun game night with us and not like Scrabble and Yahtzee and things like that. But I mean, like some of these games that they play on reality television. And I was like, okay, but I need space to do it because our house would not work. And so that's Hmm. how the idea was born. Where do we know a lot of open space? (laughs) With a bunch of open mats. (laughs) So yeah, we're hosting, it's called Couples Game Night at Fluid Jiu-Jitsu. It is going to be a crazy good time. And then it ended up turning into more just Jiu-Jitsu people than our friends, because I feel like it's going to be more fun (laughs) with people who like to be active and are okay with moving their body in weird places. So, But that's half the fun for the people that have no idea what the hell is going on. You know, maybe the second round, if this one is a success, we'll do it again. But yeah, so that's Saturday on the 11th. So stay tuned for <laughs> stories on that. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then next weekend <clears throat> is Josh. Two weekends. Two weekends? Well, after the 11th. So the weekend of, is that the 18th? The weekend yeah. of the 18th is Josh Janice's Gentle Heart Lifestyle Camp Winter Edition of mm-hmm. 2023. So we will be at that all weekend. Probably won't do a podcast that weekend. Just warning you. <laughs> oh, maybe we'll have some cool guests. That we'll decide that we have time for. We always say that, and then we never do. So <laughs> probably not. Just assume in two weeks from now you won't see a podcast. Maybe. But, but uh, yeah, we got a cool a bunch of cool instructors coming to teach at White Lotus. Uh, Jay Pages from Arizona, I believe. Uh, Samantha Courier, Rich Saab, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> That's, That's what, what Rich, Rich likes to say. Whoa, that was weird. <laughs> Rich likes to talk about how everything is. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> He's a cool dude. I like him a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we just had a really cool seminar yesterday, actually, at Fluid. And it was with Professor Felipe Barbosa from Baraboo, Wisconsin. Yes. He's a second degree black belt. Is he a Pedro Sauer black belt? I don't no. think he is. No. Yeah, I don't know who his affiliation is with, but if you're from Wisconsin, you've probably heard of Felipe Barbosa. He's a very popular name here, and he's very, very good at side control. Yep. So that's what we 
got to learn a little bit more about his world yesterday. Actually, both our seminars, the seminar last weekend, we'll go back to that one first. That was in Peoria, Illinois. Oh, yeah, we had that one last weekend. <laughs> that one was at Fear No Lee in Peoria, Illinois. Uh, that gym is ran by Fear Phil. Fear No Lee. Or Fear Na Fear Na D. No. That's, that's how it's spelled. Oh. It's pronounced Fear No Lee. Okay. Do you remember me having this discussion yeah, with him about it? Yeah, but I remember it? also trying to think about it and hearing it in my head just saying, like, fear not me type of thing, but not knowing, or knowing that the last word is not me. I thought it was D. So, like, fear, like, F-E-A-R, but spelled F-I-R. Yeah. And then I thought it was na, N-A-H type of sounding, and then D. Phil, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pronounced fear no Lee. Okay. It is the discussion we had. And the re- the way I remember it is nobody should fear us, please. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's spelled F I R N A D L I in like Irish or Gaelic alphabet stuff. L I. What? D L I. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's a very complicated name. <laughs> yes, but what that means in I can't remember if it's Irish or Gaelic. But what that means is men of law, because they train a lot of law enforcement in the area. They have a lot of law enforcement in the gym. Phil is also a, um, a police officer. Does something with law enforcement. I can't remember. Um, but the logo is pretty cool. It's like uh, it's got a clover for Irish stuff, and then it also has some um, handcuffs for the law enforcement, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was a fun place to go. Phil comes up to the uh, General Art Lifestyle camps and a lot of Globe Charters camps also. Mm-hmm. So he's cool to learn a lot of fun jujitsu from. But Brenton, our professor, and also, I guess, father, father in law, whatever. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> yeah. He went to teach a seminar and we talked about spaces and angles, some concepts behind jujitsu. And then he also did a bunch of side control um, pins and submissions Mm -hmm. in Nogi. Yep. Yeah, which is a little different because we do have a couple Nogi classes a week at our gym, but we're primarily Gi. Like I would say Tuesday mornings and Wednesday nights are Nogi and every other class is Gi. And then sometimes every other Friday. But we primarily train in the Gi but, yeah, it's probably, I'd say, 75% gi, 25% no gi. Yeah, so when we get to go to a no gi seminar, it's actually pretty fun for us because we don't really train no gi very much. We train a lot of yes gi, as Nick likes to say. Yes gi. <laughs> well, I love yes gi and I love no gi, but that's kind of the topic today because two weeks ago, the seminar was a side control in no gi, mm-hmm. and then this weekend, yesterday, was a side control seminar in the gi, specifically on how to use the lapel to pin people and submit people from side control in the gi, which mm-hmm. was a fantastic uh, system that Philippe showed us. Yes, it was very fun. He So we had actually somewhat taken the seminar from Philippe Barbosa before. We I think it's pronounced Philippe. Sure. <laughs> I heard it both ways. I've always called him Felipe because that's just my Mexican yeah. coming out. In me. <laughs> and he's Portuguese, so it's like the same. But... Yeah, so he uh, actually taught at Josh Janice's first Gentle Art Lifestyle Camp. Yes. The first one that he had about, I don't know, probably two years ago at Almost this point, two years, yeah. Which is pretty wild. So we learned from him, and I remember I was a four-strike white belt, and he showed this side control thing that he was showing yesterday that we can get into in a little bit, but I have been using it literally ever since. Yes. And it's not very successful for me, but... Yet. After yesterday, when I saw a couple more key details, I think it'll help a lot. Yes. Plus, the first time you learned it, you were maybe a three type white belt. I thought it was four, but yeah. Something like that. Who knows? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, still, it was a white belt. Right. So, so I wasn't really retaining a ton at that point. I was just trying to survive still. I and mean, I, I think still am, but. It was one of your first seminars mm-hmm. of like ever. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if it was your actual first seminar, but definitely within the first five seminars you've ever been to. It was definitely my first camp. That That's too. for sure. I think it was my first camp, too. But. And I remember it was one of the last days, too. So we had already been having a packed, filled weekend of jujitsu, And then... I don't remember what day it was. I remember it was the last <laughs> because Barbosa came in late. 
and he could only teach that one class because he was on vacation that weekend and he had his son with him. Oh, and yeah. And they yeah. literally just came to Open Guard to teach that one seminar and then went home. Uh, yeah, back to vacation. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But, I have a, the best memory of anybody you know, by the way. <laughs> and that's totally a lie. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was really cool. So we got to see different stuff from the same position using gi and no gi. And this is kind of a conversation that Nick and I have a lot is which one do we like more? Yes. Do we like yes gi more or do we like no gi more? And our answer is... Drum Find roll. out at the end of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we will talk about the pros and cons of yes gi and no gi mm-hmm. throughout this episode. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> That's the plan, at least. Yeah. So let's talk about the seminar a little bit. Um, and then we can go into pros and cons of Yeski and of Nogi. So the seminar, well, I guess we can talk about the seminars as we go through mm-hmm. the geese, I think. Because one of the things I like about Nogi, just in general, is anything you can do in Nogi, you can also do in the gi. So you don't have to learn anything different. If you are proficient at Nogi, you can use it in the gi. Now, that also backfires on you when people start using your gi against you. You don't have the common defenses built up or the habits to go around how people are um, attacking you in the gi. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I figured out why self-defense is canceled. Oh, okay. Everyone thinks the White Lotus Open mat is today, and White Lotus Open Women's mat is the second Sunday, people. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. Well, that was a distraction. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm getting messages of how to get into White Lotus right now. Okay. Well, they get to go to open that. Okay. Um, did you hear what I said? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was listening, I promise. <laughs> so, yeah. Things you can do in no gi, you can always do in the gi also. But... People will use your gi against you in the gi. Mm-hmm. And if you have no idea what's going on with the gi, which can be very technical, mm-hmm. you can get lost in the sauce. Yes. And I think that as I'm starting to coach new female white belts that come into the gym, and whenever we start to roll, I've noticed that they are more comfortable in the gi than they are in no gi for a while. And I was the same way. Because when you first start, you don't know anything, and you can only rely on your strength. And part of your strength is your grips. So when you are in nogi and you have nothing to grip onto, or you're just so slippery that it's hard to hold on to someone the way that you think you should, then people don't tend to really like nogi when they're first starting. And this is like a general statement. Maybe you're different and you do love nogi when you start, especially if you came from wrestling. But I've just noticed a pattern between females when they come in is that they like gi better in the beginning. But then after a little bit of time, and they start realizing how technical the gi really can be, and how many different side control techniques and different uh, pinning techniques and just gi and lapel techniques that there are, they get overwhelmed. And then they start to like no gi more, because then they don't have to think as much. They don't have to worry about their grips as much. They just get to move. Which, about three to six months in, is about where I feel like people start digressing back into nogi. And then I think it's once you start getting a little bit better at jujitsu, like probably around like three stripe, four stripe white belt, is when you start liking the gi again. Because now you're starting to put things together. And that's just like my general observation. And that's how I felt. I know that's how a couple of the females feel. I know I've talked to a couple males about that as well. And that's just the pattern that I've noticed in my four years of training. Hmm. Yeah, for me, um, I've always liked the gi more than no gi traditionally. And it was funny because I would train more gi than I would no gi. But whenever I would compete, I would do better in no gi than I would do in gi, it would seem. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I have, I think I have more losses in the gi than I do in no gi. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know your record based on that, but I do yeah. remember you doing very well in the in nogi for the most part. Right. Even as a white belt, I was in the intermediate nogi, and I was like slamming down purple belts somehow. <laughs> but then in my white belt division, I would have some issues with uh, yeah, I don't know. That makes no sense. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I don't know. I, I mean, personally speaking, I really loved Nogi as a white belt. Like, I preferred Nogi class. I actually made it a point to not miss Wednesday nights, which was our Nogi class, because I loved it so much. And I still love Nogi. I have no issues with Nogi, but I definitely have been favoring the Gi a little bit more recently, just mm-hmm. because I'm learning more and more attacks with them. And so it's been more fun for me to play around with those new attacks that I'm learning in the Gi than I can with Nogi. But Nogi is fun because I'm very slippery and I'm, I'm, I like to move very quickly. And yeah. Nogi allows me to do that faster than the Gi, I think. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel a lot of people like the Gi when they start because it's easier to slow people down especially when you have no idea what's going on. But that's that's where people start to burn out their grips a lot. Yep. And that's something that my dad talks about a lot. Being a black belt for the last seven, eight years, he says that he's one of the rare few that has his hands pretty well put together because Mm -hmm. he doesn't hold on to grips and he doesn't do grip fighting and he doesn't try to win a grip fight. He'll just let it go because he doesn't think it's worth ruining your knuckles over. Sure. And there's a lot of other things that you could do without grips, at, especially at his level. <laughs> yes, at his level, for sure. I know when people get really strong grips on me, instead of working to break the grip, what I do is I work to make that grip somewhat useless for them or mm-hmm. have it become my own grip. And I know Brent talks about that a lot. Mm-hmm. But when somebody's holding on, and you can tell they're holding on for, like, dear life, if you change the angle, if you change... Um, where their grip is going, if you make it a weak grip for them, you can win the grip battle without breaking the grip and spending all this energy and focus on, I need to make sure they're not gripping me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, going back to the whole, when you start, you really don't have much to go off of besides your grips and your strength. And so, I mean, think about whether it's your first day or whether you've been doing this forever, like think about how you were when you started, or if you're going with someone who's just starting and you're probably just holding onto these lapels for dear life. Like you're holding on the lapels or sleeves as mm-hmm. much as you possibly can because you don't let go. But you don't know what to do with them, but you just won't let go. <laughs> and good thing these are uh, pretty good material that they don't break. It seems like that. It's almost like the gi is training clothing hmm. or something. Crazy. <laughs> yes. But honestly, I feel like, first off, I love loop chokes. So that helps me like gi. But... Outside of grabbing collars and lapels at some some points, I play with lapels. Outside of that, like sleeve grips and stuff, I feel like in the gi, I use a lot of no gi grips and transitions, even in the gi. Mm-hmm. Like, especially like, I guess those are frames, which aren't grips. But framing is universal, whether you're gripping or not. Mm-hmm. And you can get a lot of like C grips on the wrists. And uh, the baby maker grip, the mm-hmm. two on one grips with mm-hmm. the wrist, and you're not typically you don't grab two on one with the gi. You grab around the wrist and pull it in. Gable grips mm-hmm. or no gi s grips, because mm-hmm. when you're grabbing around someone, you're grabbing their, you know, going for a takedown or grabbing their hips. Mm-hmm. You're not focused on grabbing the belt or the gi. Right. You're focused on getting your own hands together. Right. Even you don't grab your own gi, which you can sometimes. But. For Ezekiel's. That's what I was just about to say. For Ezekiel's, you do the two fingers with two fingers grip, mm-hmm. or even a baseball bat choke. You can do a two finger, two finger grip. What? Yeah. Uh, you can also transition those two grips to the gi if you wanted to. I find those chokes are way more successful in the gi than they are in no gi. Just for that reason. Those These grips are really hard mm-hmm. to finish people with. Yeah. Yeah, I've been actually trying to work Ezekiel's more <coughs> in the last couple of weeks. And it's no gi or gi? No gi. Yeah, no gi Ezekiel's are extremely difficult. Yeah, that's why I'm trying. <laughs> and I have not succeeded yet, but yeah. one day. <laughs> one day. But then there's things like paper cutters that are nearly impossible without a gi. Mm-hmm. Or <laughs> X-choke. No. That's really hard in no gi, though. It is really hard, it's but... It's not impossible. <laughs> I've been working my no gi X-choke from Mount which is something I can um, say was inspired by Charles Harriet, who was inspired by Hadra Gracie. Hadra Gracie is talking about how mount is the most dominant position. And even in Nogi, you can use it to do whatever you want, basically. Mm -hmm. And Charles has been posting about how he's been working his mount game, making sure that he can't get, the people can't leave his mount and working his Nogi X choke. 
And so, of course, <laughs> I have decided to try that myself. <laughs> <laughs> and so far, I haven't finished the Nogi X. Actually, I think I have, but not consistently. I haven't finished the, the Nogi X choke, but I've definitely made some people miserable. And probably the real reason I haven't finished it is because I'm not trying to put my forearm into people's throats without a great grip Yeah. at certain times. Yeah. For those of you who don't know who Charles Harriet is, he is a Globetrotters affiliate and... Instructor. I yeah, I don't know what his degree is. Maybe the second degree as well? I, I don't know. He doesn't wear a belt very often. So. He's primarily Nogi. <laughs> yeah. But he has taught at most of Josh's camps, and that's where we've learned... Or yeah, where we've learned from him, where we've met him. He's a fantastic black belt. Nick says that he, Charles Harriet, is one of the few people that makes him feel like a first day white belt, which yep. is pretty hard for Nick to feel because Nick is pretty good for those of you who have never rolled with him. But yeah, for someone to make you feel like you're a first day or when you've been doing it for over five years is pretty cool. Yeah. Yep, he toys with me. Yeah. <laughs> which is awesome. I love those people. But he's awesome, and so, yeah, he's primarily <clears throat> Nogi, and so he's taught us a lot. Like, I know a lot of the Gramby and inversions, inversions that I do is from Charles Harriet, and he actually posts this really cool Imanari role into a sweep that I've been playing around with quite a bit. But that's, like, way more fun in Nogi than it is in Gi. I do in Gi. I mean, yeah, but, like, it's just not as fun. <laughs> yeah, it's you actually... You get slowed down. It's illegal in Gi, because you can't reap. Yep. <laughs> but I do it anyways, I don't care. I don't know, I don't like this skinning on my neck, and I just, I like inverting in Nogi way, way more. I I was probably pretty sure I was born upside down. <laughs> As a child, I used to watch TV upside down. In high school, I used to play Guitar Hero upside down. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and now I do jujitsu upside down. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's been a track record my whole life. <laughs> yeah. And then there's even a picture of Nick and our nephew upside down on the couch. Like yep. a year ago it's a too. family thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Always love doing handstands, headstands. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit on um, the Nogi X choke, which I've been playing with a bit. <laughs> difficult. Very difficult, I would say. Yeah, I don't really understand. Like I said, I've been playing around with the X choke in the Ezekiel with Nogi quite a bit. And. It's not going great, but <laughs> sure. So yeah, we learned some side control stuff in Nogi and in Peoria, and a lot of it was more about your door stops, and it was about closing space with your legs or your arms, or pulling them up into you to close yeah. that space. And yeah, one thing I was going to say about that is using your skeleton and crossing your bones in Nogi is how you hold people down without any sort of grips. So what that means is um, it's almost like when you're in top position, you use your palm, push it into the ground, and then you close the space with your forearm on people. And what you do is you don't try to hold people with your muscles, but you use your skeletal structure. You put weight into your skeletal structure and they can't move when you start to lock up your arm in certain ways mm -hmm. versus when you're like gripping somebody and trying to hold them there there's always some sort of resistance or play when people are moving their hips but if you post into the mat it's very hard for them to move that structure that's created through your whole body with your skeleton mm -hmm. yeah and when you're holding in a grip trying to keep someone pinned like you said there's a lot of resistance so there's a lot of push-pull method with that and when when you're going with someone good, as soon as they feel that little bit of space to be able to, you know, prop their head out or prop their elbow out or whatever they can to be able to fight for an overhook, underhook, or get out of a choke, they're going to find it. But if you are using your skeletal muscle, or skeletal muscles, Skele <laughs> that's not a thing, <laughs> but it? if you're using your skeleton to kind of pin them down, then they have really no space. Like the only way to do it is to physically break you. And breaking a bone is very difficult, actually. Yes. You have to have, I mean, think about the first time you tried to armbar someone. Did you get it right away? Probably not. You had to learn how to, where the fulcrum was and how to actually properly break an arm. Otherwise, you're just going to sit there all day. So it's pretty difficult to break a bone. 
Yeah, bones are very resilient. Mm -hmm. So have your calcium and vitamin D, folks. I was listening to a podcast (laughs) this week, and they started talking about bones. I don't really know why. I mean, I was it a murder why. podcast? It was a murder podcast. What were they talking about chopping up bones? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> but they said something, and she was like, "Do you want to know something really disturbing? And it's gonna make you change the way you think about bones for the rest of your life." And the other girl was like, "I don't know, do I?" And while I'm listening to this, I'm like, "I don't know, do I?" And then she told us, and I was like, "I really never needed to know that information because now I do think about it, and it's gross. And now I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you guys so that you can all hear it with me." Because it's super Uh-oh. weird. But it's just, if you really think about it, your bones are always wet. Yes, they are. They are never dry. And that's just gross. That's not gross. It's, it's so normal. It's gross. No. Just thinking it's obvious. about your bones are never not wet. Nothing in your body's dry. Skin. No, it's not. Especially in the winter. No. Mm-hmm. Only when it chaps and starts to crack and bleed. Mm-hmm. Or your scalp? Nope. (laughs) Ears? Nope. (laughs) Everything's wet. Just get used to it. Gross. (laughs) I think you are used to it. Anyways. Bones. Use your skeletal frame. There we go. Not skeletal muscle. Skeletal frame. Yeah, use your skeleton frame to um, close space and keep things tight. Mm -hmm. Crossing bones. You can use use lots of little fulcrums that you can create Mm -hmm. bone on bone. I think it's also super helpful to learn that <clears throat> type of style, especially when you're smaller, because you can't rely on your strength or your mm-hmm. body to be able to hold someone down. You have to rely on your skeletal frame or yeah. you're just going to lose them every time. Yep. And it's not, you don't have to rely on muscle, like you said. And it's not also weight that you're using. It's um, empowering your skeleton with your weight. Mm-hmm. So there's a difference of laying on somebody versus posting in certain places that put your weight into small uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even in bottom side control, if you feel them over too much, you're just going to sweep them. And that's the difference between them laying on you versus them using them to their skeleton. To pressure you. Yeah. So, like, if you find your sternum and their sternum and that's how you pin them based on or rather than just laying on top of them, there's a big difference there in the technique styles. And it all comes down to the frame that you're using. Yeah, and it's very technical there. Mm-hmm. But that's why it's so hard to teach side control to new people because that's things that you can't see. Yeah, that's, that's like invisible, invisible jujitsu. Well then, <laughs> yeah, it's just things you have to play with. Same with uh, Master Sour. He talks about bone on bone all the time. He talks about crossing bones to be able to have that extra added resistance. Yep. And the biggest thing that he taught us was flexing your hips in a specific way when you're in guard. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that comes down to being invisible jujitsu because you can't really teach that. You can explain it as best as you can, but you can't like really get you your can't whole point across. see it. Yeah. If you were just hearing it or even just seeing it in a video or demonstration if you didn't feel it at all it would be very difficult to understand Mm -hmm. but basically he just i think he calls it the hip tilt yeah and all it is is pelvic tilt yeah you're just in there and think about your hips being like a bowl and all you're doing is just tilting that bowl so like you know when you're trying to get that last bit of soup out of your bowl when you're trying to eat it with your last spoonfuls and that you just if you keep it flat, then you're not going to be able to get a whole spoonful. But if you tilt it, you you will. That's what you're doing with your hips. Soup season. So that's all that's on her mind. <laughs> Soups. Yeah. But that's what it is with your hips. So you're just tilting your hips so that you just apply more pressure to. Yeah. And this is, if you're watching this video, this is the difference. So right now my hips are tilted forward. If I tilt it up to the sky, that's the difference. Nearly impossible to see. Mm-hmm. But it makes a huge difference when you're in somebody's clothes guard. Mm-hmm. Or when you're just posturing up or basing in general. Right. And that comes down to... Same thing with wrestling. Skeletal frame. And you can also do that in gi or no gi. That's not really one right. or the other type of thing, which is nice. Right. Your skeleton, actually, you can use in yes gi and no gi and all the wet. time. Your wet skeleton. <laughs> it's always available for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. No gi side control is really just about using your frame, your skeletal frame, to yeah. close space and creating the right pressure points Mm -hmm. on your opponent and in certain spots on the mat you want to dent the mat with your skeleton right but then 
We got to learn some other side control techniques yesterday in the gi Mm -hmm. from Professor Barbosa. And that was completely different. It was just, it was so crazy how it was two seminars from the exact same position, but totally opposite of each other. And not even just in what you're wearing, but like the technique style. It's just crazy. Yes. Just you so endless. It's wild to me. (laughs) I love it. One of my favorite parts about it. Yeah. But what Philippe showed us was a way to use a far side lapel, pass it underneath your opponent through the hips, and then use it to control their far side shoulder and their near side hip with one singular grip. And what that does is it gives you um, cross body control literally with one grip. So if you imagine, there's a lot of people talking about how when you're on the back, <clears throat> you want to control one hip and one shoulder. So that way people can't spin away from you, spin towards you. You get really good control on the back. And that's typically with one hook in on one side and an underhook or um, just grabbing the shoulder on the opposite side. Or if you've been working the super hook, you see that a lot. You always want that cross control so they can't spin out. So that's essentially what we're doing with the gi here in side control now is passing the, the lapel underneath the body, getting a grip and using our skeleton on the hip over here and the gi tightening up around the shoulder and around their back makes it so when they try to turn up into you, they're actually pinned to the ground still from the tension of the gi around their shoulder. So then you have your other free hand, you have your shoulder or your chest that you can still compress with. You can use your head as the shoulder of justice or to break the posture of their neck. And you can use your other hand to make many different grips to open up many different attacks or transitions. Yeah, you showed probably 15 different attacks yesterday. What was your favorite one? What do you think? <laughs> it was probably the heel hook. We didn't do a heel hook. Ah, I was seeing if you were paying attention. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Did I miss something? No, you probably liked the arm bar. Mm-hmm. What do you think I liked? You probably liked the rear triangle. Probably the real tr- <laughs> rear triangle. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because the people at our gym actually just like know those are our moves. And whenever he showed something like the rear triangle, everyone looked at Nick. And when everyone, yeah. or when he showed the arm bar, everyone looked at me. Yep. Mm-hmm. It was so funny. And then Bunton Bo goes, you know, I'm really like more scared of your arm bars now. I'm like, good, you should be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not scared. Here you go. Mm. Take it. No, nope, there's Take coffee it. in oh, the way. I got a gee. <laughs> this happens every day, by the way. Stop it. <laughs> So, uh, we also learned a new position in jiu-jitsu. Do you remember it? Knee on back? Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> side control with the lapel? <laughs> no. I was like, I thought we knew this, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> One of the transitions he, he made ended up, it's a very hard to describe position, but it's knee on back, if you can imagine it. With your lapels, almost like reins of a horse. <laughs> It's it was ridiculous, and then I asked him how many points you get for the knee on back position, <laughs> and he was like, you know, I need to talk to IPJJF. <laughs> we need to do something here, at least two points. <laughs> yeah, so basically, it's when you're holding them in side control and you loosen up maybe just a little bit enough to the point where they can do a backwards roll, and then while they're doing a backwards roll from the bottom, you catch their lapels. So when they're kind of so it's inverted, through underneath their armpits. Yeah, and when they're inverted, you're holding both of their lapels behind their back, and then you stop them from rolling back into position by using your knee on their spine. Yes. It's very difficult to explain. You have to just yes. try it. <laughs> I actually posted a picture of it on the BJJ Marriage Instagram. Oh, okay. Go check that out. Yeah. <clears throat> but lots of fun positions, all stemming from different lapel grips. And then um, the paper cutter choke, obviously, was in there. And outside of using their lapel against you, you can always use your own lapels against your opponent also. Um, One of the things I really like to do with lapels is kind of do that handcuff grip. So when they get a bent arm and you're able to wrap either their lapel or your own lapel around their wrist, that makes people... It traps their arm, but also makes them focus on the wrist that you have, and then you can do whatever else you want because they're like, I don't want my wrist in here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
Another thing I really love to do with the gi, and I've done it to you before, so picture this, is when I'm going for a loop choke on you, first I pull out my own gi and wrap it around your neck, and then people want to defend the choke. Okay, so they, they grab the lapel, and they push it away from their neck. And as they do that, they're using both their hands, because they're like, oh, I'm getting choked, got to protect my neck. And then I switch from my lapel that I've handed to them, and grab their own lapel that I actually choked them with. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, what just happened? I just broke the grip. How am I still getting choked with a lapel? Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that there's two loop chokes that I I alternate back and forth between. (laughs) And then they get choked and they're like, what the fuck just happened? You can see her face. You're very rude. (laughs) It's so funny. Uh, People get so confused. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The other thing I do is I'll use my lapel in that position also. And then... Um, I'll just dangle my lapel in front of their neck. So what happens is people are like, oh, I don't want that around my neck. So they grab the lapel. And when they grab the lapel, I wrap it around their hand and sink back for an armbar because they can't get their hand out now because I've handcuffed them. Hmm. Yeah. Genius. Lapels are fun. <laughs> Lapels are super fun. And Philippe talked about it. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, there's gi jiu-jitsu. There's no gi jiu-jitsu. And... People always ask when we're using the gi, well, what what would you do if there was no gi? And it's like, it doesn't fucking matter. We're playing in the gi right now. You so use it. This. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we would not do this in no gi. If you were in no gi, you wouldn't be playing with lapels because there's no lapels to grab. Right. But, but we have a gi, so let's use it. Yeah. So I know that we just went to a Jeff Curran seminar, too, who taught some gi tricks as well. And he was showing... Something that I really liked was the handcuffing that Nick was bringing up in crucifix position. So if you are holding someone in a crucifix, but you also use your own lapel to hold their arm back, then it makes it even more difficult for them to escape and you have more attacks available to you because they have Mm -hmm. one less limb. Mm -hmm. So using your your own lapel, and I think that's kind of where a lot of people struggle, especially when they first start in the gi, is that they always think that they have to choke someone with their gi. Like, they have to take their lapels out, or they have to use their arms and their grips to push them around and things like that. But you also have to remember that you're also wearing a gi with lapels. Yes. And if you you pull those out, they are pretty lengthy to be able to tie someone up. They wrap around someone's neck actually better than somebody's own gi does. Yep. And there's actually this one choke that I've been playing with and I have not hit it yet but I've been close on a few people like last cog close and I didn't learn it anywhere I just was playing around with it when I was rolling with someone at our gym and I ended Look up at Brittany inventing jujitsu over here I sh- did not invent this move I can <laughs> guarantee that but so far everyone I showed it to has never seen it before so maybe I'll call it my own move but I probably did not invent it <laughs> and I'm just trying to play around with it, but basically it's my own grip. I'm holding someone in a kasakatami or scarf, whatever you want to call it, and I'm facing them, their head, not their not their hips, and I'm taking, you know, it actually isn't my gi, it's their gi, but I am pulling their lapel out on the side closest to me, and I'm bringing it up and around to the opposite side of their neck, and then I'm oh. transitioning and I'm grabbing That's a bravo it. choke. Bravo. Bravo. Okay. Yes. But the way that I've been finishing it and playing with it is, like, because you can't just do that and expect them to choke. Right. Then you hand it to the other hand behind Mm -hmm. their head, and then the hand that had the lapel, I almost snapped like I was showing people. (laughs) So the hand that that was holding onto the lapel, you now slide underneath your own arm while you kind of baseball slide past them. So basically what it does is it turns into a head and arm triangle with the lapel. I'll finish like a loop choke. Mm-hmm. So it's a variation of a Bravo. Mm. And I learned the Bravo from Jeff Glover. Okay. But, um, and I, I will never forget that moment in my life because he was demonstrating the Bravo on me and like it was tight, but I didn't tap yet because I was waiting for, I didn't know if he was done with the technique or not. Cause he didn't even tell me what he was doing. And then he was like, come on, freaking tap stupid blue belt. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, he was like, you want me to pop your head off or what? And I was like, oh, I, sure. Tap here. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no. He was like, blue belts. And I was like, okay. <laughs> no comment on Jeff Glover. Jeff Glover's an interesting man. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Good jujitsu. 
Yeah, so that choke is very effective, though. <laughs> I learned. Yeah. It's like a darse, a head and arm triangle, a loop choke, all in one, right? It's a lot of things. And the first time that I tried it, I was on that last stage, and I tried to go over the top of my arm. And I was learning that that is not tight enough and not effective enough. It gives them enough space to kind of wiggle out or shrimp out. And so now I've switched to underneath my hand, and that gets super tight, super quick to the point where they almost don't even have time to tap because it's going so quick, which mm-hmm. is fun. But you have to set it up properly, and that's mm-hmm. that's the hard part because, you know, most people are not just going to lay there and be like, choke me. Brittany Lee, BJJ Fanatics video coming out in no. five years. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, yeah, so basically. Huge genre for me. We have hinted at a lot of different lapel grips that you can use, mostly from side control is what we've been talking about, but they're everywhere. I mean, the lapel is your friend when you're in the gi, and if you are not using them to your advantage, then you should, should be. You should be learning how to use their gi or your gi when you're playing in the gi on how to make your jujitsu better. Yeah, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot of gi instructionals or gi techniques out there in the guard using to sweep people Mm -hmm. or to hold people in your guard or to confuse the shit out of people or Mm -hmm. take their backs, Mm -hmm. things like that. But what Philippe showed us was a lapel pin, which is very uncommon to see. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful that he came and showed that at our seminar. And honestly, I haven't really seen it anywhere else either. Mm Mm-mm. Yeah, and honestly, the only reason that I knew the beginning position was because we've taken the seminar from him before, Mm -hmm. and we actually went out to lunch with him after the seminar, and I said to him, I was like, so do your students do this? And he's like, I don't teach this. Uh And I was like, oh, okay. So I just like feel lucky enough to have learned this now twice from him, and he doesn't show it to anyone. Because I remember after that first seminar, I was coming back to Fluid, and I was like, let me try this on you. Yeah. And I was, like, working it on all the big guys at the gym, like the 250, 300-pound guys, because I wanted to see if it worked, and it does. So, it's cool. So, basically what we're saying is, if you can ever take a Philippe Barbosa seminar, you probably should. <laughs> yeah. It'll be a gonna, good time. You're not going to learn based on hearing us talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe if you watch my videos in the future, mm. you might see some of it popping up. Mm. I feel bad, though, because... Yeah. You shouldn't be giving away stuff for free like that. Well, (laughs) I just told him yesterday, I was like, you're giving away all of our secrets for free, like literally for free. So if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter at XNickXLEX, you'll see that I've been posting a lot of technique reels and short videos recently. And one of the reasons I do that is first off, I just want to share jujitsu with people. Secondly, I believe that jujitsu should be like open source knowledge that you should be able to find for free. On the internet. And if you want to come learn from me, then you know where I am. If you want to have a private lesson or a seminar from me, then you already know that I have some techniques that I can share. And you understand my teaching style. So that's why I put the videos out as much as I do. Yeah, that makes sense. But outside of that, some things I learned from people, and I feel like it's like plagiarism when I teach their techniques. (laughs) You know, but a lot of times I give credit when credit's due for when I learn things, but. That, and also, like, do you think that they taught themselves all of that? No. I mean, I would say the only thing that is, like, super, super 100% unique is the donkey guard to Jeff Glover. Everything else is probably. Not even, because Lachlan just released a course, Lachlan Giles released a reverse closed guard course. Obviously, yes. Much further in time from when Donkey Guard was used in competition in Jeff's, Jeff Glover's competition prime. Yeah. But I feel like it's, um, you know, really hard to say that any <laughs> technique. Our dogs have been sleeping literally all day and they decide now that they want to fight, but they're upstairs. Yeah. Anyway. But um, I forgot what I was saying. We were talking about plagiarism, and we said Jeff oh, yeah. Glover, Donkey Guard, but you said not even. Yeah. Yeah, I think that jujitsu really has, it's always full circle. So there's always some hot topic, mm-hmm. and then time passes, and the people that have been around for a while, it's been like, oh, this is popular again? Oh, this is popular again? Yeah. I feel like 
just, I mean, I just thought of this right now. It's not like this is something I've been stewing on, but I feel like jujitsu is kind of like a game of telephone in a way where it's yes. like Master Alio is the one who taught all the Gracies all the things that they knew. And then the Gracies kind of passed down their knowledge. And so they passed it to Master Sauer and then Master Sauer passed it on to his black belts and his black belts are passing it on to their schools. And then the students of our schools are now passing it down to either our own students or through the internet or things like that. And like, Everyone kind of finds their own little uh, flavors to add to it. Right. So it's, and I could see where you think it's plagiarism, like, oh, I just learned this, let me show other people type of thing. But at the same time, like, that's not their move. They didn't invent that. And sure. even if they think they did, someone else probably invented it before them with a different name, with a little bit different of a style. Right. So it's And not, I'm going to add my own style to it when I teach it or when I do it. Yep, and then the people who learn it from you are also going to do their own style to it and teach it the way that they want to or to make it better. Right. And jujitsu is always evolving. So even when you find something that works really well for you, like it's going to work better for someone else in a different way. Mm -hmm. And there's always a counter to every move. Yeah. Every single move. <laughs> I was just teaching someone <clears throat> the armbar triangle omoplata trifecta this yeah. week. And we were talking about how all three of those are open, depending on what your partner is doing in your guard. And then I was showing him, like, okay, well, what if the arms are here? What do you have? He was like, oh, well, you have this. I was like, you do, but you also have this. And then when I move, and I was like, and then when they move out of this, then you have this. And he was just like, how do you stop that? I was like, you don't. You just move. <laughs> you just keep going. I was like, that's kind of what happens in jujitsu is everything is a counter. Like once yes. you stop their movement, they're not going to move on to something else. And then you have to figure out how to stop that. And then they're going to try to figure out how to stop you. And everything kind of feeds off of each other. So good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's so true though. <laughs> but yeah, even this last week I posted a technique and there was a lot of people saying that they would just arm bar me when I do that technique. And it's like, well, yeah, anything's possible, but it's also good to share these different techniques. And also, I've never been armbarred in that position. So I welcome you to come and try and armbar me. And then they got in my head, which I know you're never supposed to let people on the internet get in your head. And I was like, Brittany, I'm going to do this move to you. This is the move. You know this move, right? The Pac-Man sweep? And she's like, yeah. I was like, okay, armbar me now. <laughs> and then I did the move, and she couldn't armbar me, and she's pretty good at armbars. So... I don't know what that says about anything. <laughs> Sounds like you're letting people get in your head. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but you said it was really hard to armbar me in that position, right? Yeah. I just think that, I mean, if you guys don't know what the Pac-Man sweep is, sorry, you're not caught up Find on this Find me on Instagram. But basically, or Twitter. When, when you're doing that, I mean, it's super difficult to try. Because when you're doing an armbar from that position, you either have to push into them to make their arm go on a 45 degree angle, which I couldn't because you were pushing me at yeah, the Yeah, with the straight time. arm. So we were kind of like arm wrestling it basically at that point. Or you have to flip your hips around their head and take it as like a traditional arm bar. And because you were pushing me in an opposite motion of where I needed to go, mm -hmm. it was just, I, w I wouldn't say impossible, but it was very, very, very difficult for me at my level to try to spin around and do an arm bar. That's what I was saying on the internet. <laughs> what, so, did you tell them, my wife couldn't number me, so no. you're proven wrong. And then I was like, your wife sucks. I didn't bring that up at all, actually. <laughs> but there was one guy, he's one of my friends, and we had good discussion about this on Twitter. He's a brown belt from, um, I want to say, Oregon. And he said that he arm bars people from that position all the time, and that he was going to post a video showing me the arm bar that he does. Haven't seen the video yet. Bro. <laughs> I'll fight you. <laughs> nah. <clears throat> That's just some uh, some BJJ Twitter um, stuff going on, which is super fun. I love BJJ Twitter. I think it's the best jujitsu community. <coughs> oh, you okay? I swallowed coffee on the wrong too. <laughs> so I'm going to be coughing for the rest of the episode and I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, BJJ Twitter is a fun place. Hop, us, hop on and uh, find me on Twitter. It's super fun. Mm -hmm. But we were talking. Okay, so <laughs> I guess we should get into the question that we started with is mm -hmm. what's better, gi or no gi? We've kind of talked a little bit about everything. So yeah, so let's it. list out pros and cons. Okay, starting with no gi because we kind of started with no gi? Yeah. Okay, so no gi. Let's start with pros. You know I hate doing that. 
hate. I have to start Fine. with cons. Start with cons. <coughs> <laughs> I like to start with, okay, so we do this thing with our family. When we have dinner, we always talk about the best and worst parts of our day. And that way we can just, you know, have family time, conversations, all that stuff. And so. Best part of my day is waking up <coughs> next to my you. Goodness. See how much she cares? Water. <laughs> do you even hear what I said? <laughs> yeah, see, it does not matter. I was ignoring it. Yep. Um, but I always tell them, I'm like, why do we start with the best part of our day and end with the worst part of our day? Like, if the worst part of your day is that, you know, you fell on ice and the best part of your day is that you made a hundred bucks or something, why do you end it with, well, I'll I fell fall on, on ice, ice for a hundred bucks. Because then everyone in the room is just like, well, that sucks. Okay, my turn. Like, I don't know. I just hate ending <laughs> with the bad thing. So I like to always start with okay, the so bad Okay, so we're going we're gonna to do a con and pro list. Okay, con. Con cons for of, nogi? Cons of nogi. Cons of you say nogi. one, and then I'll say one, and we'll do like two each or something. Cons of nogi is it's insanely hard to hold people. Mm-hmm. I would say a uh, con of nogi is you have to be much more technical with your chokes. Like, you have to make sure you have the right grips. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Cons of nogi is um, not only are your bones wet, your skin is also wet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Slippery when wet and no gi. <laughs> but I already kind of just said that. We should have that be a rash guard. Slippery when wet. Yep. <laughs> that would be funny. I have a question real quick. Good, because I don't have a fourth con right now. <laughs> if uh, for leg locks, are legs harder or easier to hold on to if people are wearing spats versus bare skin? I don't know. I don't like rolling in shorts because I don't like bare skin on bare skin. It feels really gross. Right, but... So you're always wearing spats. I've recently switched from spats to bare legs, and I'm trying to figure out if leg locks are easier to or harder to hold on to with a rash guard or with spats versus no spats. So if it's spats on spats, is it easier? Spats versus bare leg, easier or harder? And then bare leg versus bare leg, easier or harder? I think that's a question for another time, but something I've been thinking about recently. Because I know bare skin on bare skin when you're trying to hold, like, somebody's back Ugh. is, like, extremely slippery. Ugh. Hard to hold on to. So that's why you see a lot of people compete with a rash guard on anyways. Unless you're chiseled like a Greek god. Gross. And you want to show off a body or whatever. Anyways. <laughs> no gi. <laughs> Another con for no gi. Um, it favors athleticism. If you don't have the techniques to stop people's athleticism. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't really have a whole lot of cons for no game. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like foreshadowing where I'm going. But <laughs> Okay. <laughs> moving on to positives of gi. Positives uh, of no gi. No gi. Positives of com- pros of no gi is that you can read. You can read less rules in no gi. Mm-hmm. In competition. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, another con in no gi. Ranking. Oh, you're going back. Yeah, because it just popped up in my head. Mm. Ranking. It's really... I've seen lots and lots more no-gi gyms pop up. They're still doing belt ranks, but they never wear a belt. And it seems like it's more difficult to promote people in no-gi than it is in the gi traditionally. Okay, I thought of another con then, which doesn't even have to be a con, depending on your perspective on it. Mm-hmm. But if you go to a no open mat, right. it's very, very difficult to know who you're rolling with. You so if you're a white belt, it's a con. If you're a black belt, it's a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, you don't know if the person you're going with is super high level, and you should be, like, given your A game, or if you should be, you know, not smashing other people because you're at a different gym type of thing. I mean, if you're a white belt, it doesn't really matter because you're going to suck anyway. But <laughs> it is, it's is—it's very hard for me. Like, we just had a, a no-gi black belt come to our gym on Friday. And I knew he was a black belt. So oh, that's yeah. Nice. That's right. But, like, at the same time, if I didn't. I like, would... we had, like, a guy that was there for his second day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you just, you don't really know what level of intensity to give people in a no-gi open mat where you don't know someone. And you have to, like. 
kind of weigh out your options and start to feel each other out. And then I remember I was rolling with this one girl at an open mat once and we had never rolled together before. We didn't know each other's ranks. I was a blue belt. She was a purple belt, but we didn't know that at the time. And it was no gi. <laughs> and it was no gi. And we started rolling in about a minute in. She stops the roll and she looks at me and she's like, you're not a white belt, are you? And I was like, you're not either, are you? <laughs> And so then we started turning it up a little bit. Yeah, that's but, fun. So that's, I guess, a con, if you think of it as a con. It's a, it's something to be noted about Nogi. It's a game. Yeah. <laughs> something that changes the dynamic of Nogi. Yeah. Okay, so some pros is you can reap. <laughs> yeah, less rules. Less rules. You're slippery. <laughs> you can get out of positions quicker because of being slippery. Yeah. And... I think that there are different takedown opportunities for you when you don't have a grip, when you're not relying on your grip to take someone down. You have... Uh, You can also do that in the gi, though. Yeah, but like when you don't have a grip to rely on to take someone down, like a lapel grip or something, you just have to move on to other options, I guess, which is... I don't know. I think it's a pro. That has... I don't think it has anything to do with the gi or no gi. I think it does. (laughs) Okay. Sure. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> pros of no gi. Uh, I guess you can put it the other way. Pros, you don't know what people's rank are, so you can go as light as you want <laughs> and then just see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> this is a very short list for no gi. Yeah. I thought Surprisingly, it was going to be more. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I feel like no gi, a pro, is you don't have to know as many techniques as you have to learn in gi. Because sure. because of the technicality of the gi, it, there's a lot more to learn. So that's also a con of no gi. A smaller technique pool, but also a pro of no gi if you're a beginner, which I see a lot of beginners liking no gi because of that reason. <clears throat> it's easier to learn. Yeah. Maybe we'll think more as we talk about the gi then. Yeah. So some cons of gi... Whoever's taking notes and writing this down, thank you. Because we're not. <laughs> uh, your grips can get burnt out very easily. So cons of gi, mm-hmm. you're saying. Grips and hand health in general. Mm-hmm. Taping your fingers. Mm-hmm. Playing with all that bullshit. I actually just sprained my middle finger two weeks ago by holding on to a white belt gi too much because I was trying to control him because he was being really spazzy. Mm. And he like licked out of it as fast as he could and my whole Mm. finger like busted with it and I was like "Hmm, that's a lesson for me to not hold on as tight but I was just trying to keep him from moving yeah honestly in gi I never hold on the grips that hard Mm -hmm. like never it's not worth it I don't think I had until then yeah when people start to yank on their grips in gi that's when I let go and take care of the or capitalize on the opportunity of the space that they get when their arm flies away or they back up super far then I take control of that space. Sure. Um, but yeah, so that's so a con of gi gripping. Another pro of gi, it, con, con, a con <laughs> of gi is, <laughs> I'm getting all confused. A con of gi is that not every body type is the same as an A1, A2, A3, A4 gi. Oh. And so my God, is it really freaking hard to find a perfect size gi for yourself? Like yeah. Sometimes the pants are too long or the sleeves are too long or the sleeves are too short and the pants are too long or like maybe the hips don't fit, but the top is like ridiculously large. Like it's just, that drives me nuts. Yep. Yeah. So a con of gi and a pro of no gi. So this is the same topic. <laughs> that gis are expensive as shit. Mm-hmm. And... No gi gear always looks cooler than gi gear. Yeah. I would say like 80, 90% of the time, people in no gi sets look way cooler, way more badass than people in gi sets. Mm -hmm. Like this gi is very unique and I think it's very fun. But other than that, I have a blue gi, I have a white gi, I have a black gi. Some gis on the inside have something cool, but when the hell are you ever seeing the inside of somebody's gi? Only when you're taking the reins on their knee on back. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe. But Nogi looks freaking cool. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so much more creativity in Nogi than there is in the Gi. Style-wise. Style-wise. Mm-hmm. And, like, even if you put some of those patterns that people put on Nogi compression gear, if you put that, like, on a Gi, it just wouldn't even look right. It would, like, clash. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. So. so that's a kind of Gi is that they are just <clears throat> expensive. Exactly. <clears throat> Yes. Um, and laundry. Uh, 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Laundry's a lot harder in ghee than it is in no ghee. And they shrink so fast. Yeah. And we don't dry our ghees. Like, it takes so much time. What well, After training, we get home. I throw the ghees in the washer. We make dinner. And then the ghees are in the basement in the washer. And I have to go in the cold and then take them upstairs and dry them. <laughs> and it's really cold. And I'm just trying to go to sleep. And I always forget. <laughs> Because we don't dry our geese. Personal problem. So a personal con for me is hanging up the geese after drying or washing them. Thanks for doing that always. Yeah, you're welcome. That's not my job. (laughs) (laughs) I do the laundry. Yep. But I'm a real housewife. Another. Shut up. He does no cooking and no cleaning, so don't let him fool you. (laughs) No, I'm just saying that because I work from home and I do the laundry and I do outside. Move Anyways, <clears throat> um, any other cons about the ghee? <clears throat> oh, I think a a con, and it's I guess it's a pro in a way because it's it's a safety thing. But a con is that you do have to be very careful with your grips on a ghee. You can't grip the inside of a sleeve or the inside of a pant leg because one, it's illegal in the competition. Because if someone spins out of it too quickly, your fingers are broken. So, so like you have to be mindful of where you're gripping when you're wearing a ghee. Because it's very easy to break a phalange, as to say it would. Yes. So, we could say that's part of the topics of technicality and more rules. Yeah. As um, topics in the gi. So, technicality, I think, is somewhere in between gi pro and con. Because the pro of it is more learning, more techniques that you can use. The con of that is more techniques to learn and harder for beginners to understand all of the different options that are presented with the gi. Mm -hmm. And then same thing with the rules. More rules in gi competition that are, you know, designed for the certain reasons that they're designed for. But more to remember, more to learn Mm -hmm. and harder to understand. Right. And easier to break. (laughs) Easier to... Yeah, there's more ways to hurt yourself in the gi than there is no gi. I think so. I think think so. And I remember when I was competing as a white belt, I actually preferred to compete in no gi because I thought there was going to be less ways for me to get hurt when I was in no gi. And uh, yeah, now I actually, the next competition I do is probably going to be only gi and not no gi. When's that? (laughs) Dunno. We'll find out, I guess. I'll let you know (laughs) next week. Um, pro, so, so we're still talking about cons, cons of gi, other cons of gi. What do you think? Um, it's heavy and hot. <laughs> so in the summer, you like no gi, in the winter, you like gi. So yeah. I mean, I'm wearing a sweater under my gi right now. Yeah, but it's winter. Yeah. You're always cold. Yeah. I don't know. Let's think about it more while we talk about the pros of gi. Okay. Pro of gi. So You're many more ready. chokes. <laughs> So many more strangles that you can do with the gi. And so many more grips that you can make Mm -hmm. to do different things with Mm -hmm. a whole... Yeah, there's a whole world there that we could talk about. Right. I think the lapel itself is huge. Like, not forget the sleeves and the pant grips and all that stuff. I think the lapel alone gives you such a wide variety of options and techniques and choices to choose from that... It's just endless, the things that you can do and try. Whereas you don't have the lapels and no gi, so you are kind of limited to your skeletal frame and your body techniques rather than gi techniques. Mm-hmm. Um, another pro of gi is... Okay. <laughs> She's like, oh, actually, I don't know. Uh, pro of gi is... You can show off your rank all the time and feel like you know something. (laughs) Is that a pro? (laughs) (laughs) It is when you get higher ranked. Yeah. It's a con as a white belt, a pro as a black belt. Just like no gi. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I think the having the more techniques in the gi is like the biggest pro that you can have. Otherwise, uh, another pro of the gi is that anything that you do in no, I wouldn't say anything, but most of the things you do in no gi can translate to gi. I would say anything you can do in no gi, you can do with the gi when you take out the rules that the gi comes with. Mm-hmm. 
But otherwise, it's all available. Mm-hmm. Anything in Nogi is available in Yeski. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've noticed that there's a, a particular grip that I like to do when I'm going for my arm bars, and it is easier in the gi than it is in Nogi, just because of the slipperiness of it. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that as a pro for the gi, you can slow it down a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You can use the gi to tie people up or even just like pants on pants mm-hmm. is slower to hold people uh, in guard and leg positions. Yeah. Just in general. Yeah. I don't really have any more to add, I don't think. <laughs> so do we say more pros for no gi or more pros for gi? I definitely said less pros for gi and more cons. Or No. So what? I said This is less- hard. <laughs> I said less cons for no gi, and I said less pros for gi. So in that sense, I guess I would say that I am, I would swing more You're pro no gi? Yeah. Like I would say, based on the pros and cons list that we just made, if you were putting it side by side, it would look like I like no gi better. But I think I like gi better. Yeah? I don't know. (laughs) One of the things that I really love to say when people ask me is I just love jujitsu. I don't care what I'm wearing. I will do jujitsu and it's fun for me. Mm-hmm. So like I would tell you that if I joined a gym and uh, I don't think I would join them if they were only nogi. I can agree with that. But but I wouldn't join a gym that was only gi either. I need a good mixture. A gi and no gi in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you would say if you had to put it on a 50-50 scale, where would you weigh? Like a 51-49 if you had to pick right now. I like 50-50, honestly. I like half gi, half no gi. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I'm really, (laughs) really in the middle where I just... I love jujitsu so much. I don't care what I wear, but at the same time, I don't want to be exclusively no gi. I don't want to be exclusively gi. I love, I just love it so much. <laughs> okay. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that about me? That I love jujitsu? <laughs> All right. So think about that while you're going through your week. Decide what you like about the gi and what you don't like about the gi. We're not telling you you have to pick one or the other because obviously we can't, but... Did you say gi then? You said you would lean towards gi? I would say I'd probably do 5149 gi. Wow. What a big change from from me. Right. It is. (laughs) Yes. But I know there's a lot of people out there who primarily love gi and who primarily love no gi. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has their own preferences. But... Yeah, I guess we're curious. What do you like more and why? Yeah. Yeah, because it... I would say, okay, another pro and con I just thought of is in gi competition, there's not a lot of money to be made. But no gi competition, there has been this industry that's been bubbling in the last few years of people actually getting paid to compete in no gi. And it's it's a lot... Faster, high-paced, more spectator-friendly in no gi than it is in the gi due to the speed and the grips. And if you don't understand the technicality, if you don't know jujitsu at all and you're watching jujitsu matches, no gi is going to be more fun to watch than gi because you have no fucking clue what's going on in the gi, but you can kind of see what's happening in no gi. Mm -hmm. It's just quicker, I think. It is quicker, more spectator-friendly. Yeah. For sure. Everybody hates watching the gi matches where people are just stalling in the guard, holding on to people. Yeah, I actually, <laughs> we were just watching IBJJF tournaments last weekend when we were in Illinois. and Because Euros was just on. Yep. And most of it was just boring to watch. Like, you had to, I mean, it wasn't super boring because I know what's going on. But, like, if you didn't, you would just be kind of sitting there watching people move their hands from an inch to a different inch. And it's like... What am I doing right now? And, like, you want to wait for something exciting. You want to... When you're spectating a sport, you want to see flying arm bars. You want to see flying triangles. You want to see someone 
getting choked out. Like, this is, you want to see someone getting knocked out. Like, that's just. Just bleed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's what you want. But jujitsu is a gentle art. So, like, you don't. It's not that gentle in competition. No, it's not. But you don't really see that very much, especially if you have no idea what's going on. So, nogi is definitely more exciting because people are, like, slipping and sliding and going everywhere all the time. <laughs> and there's less rules. So, they can get away with more stuff. It's true. But. It's more submissions on the table. Mm-hmm. Well, shouldn't say that because there are actually more submissions in the gi than there are in no gi. But there's less illegal technicians. <laughs> in- technicians? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need more coffee. There's less illegal submissions in no gi than there are in the gi. There's a lot of things that will get you disqualified. See, Anyways. Tell us what you like and why. We're curious. But yeah, come to Couples Night if you're from Wood, because I want to beat all of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Two weekends from now, camp in at White Lotus Gentle Art Lifestyle. It's going to be super fun. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll start promoting the Rollathon here in the next couple of weeks, too. That's end of April. It's a charity Rollathon. 12 hours. What day is it? April 26th. 2nd, 2023. Cool. It's the 22nd or 23rd, whatever that Saturday is. But it's going to be 12 hours of jiu-jitsu. It'll be one hour of a seminar from a black belt in Milwaukee, and then an hour of open mat, and then an hour seminar from a different black belt, hour of open mat, and so on and so forth for the rest of the day. Did it last year. It was a great success. <laughs> great success! Yeah, we'll talk about it more later. So. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Let mm-hmm. us know in the comments on YouTube or Spotify what you think. Gi or no gi for you. Mm-hmm. Super fun topic. So thank you all. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.